So now how to select your frame and preview them. You click your main object up here. You click your sprite object up here. And then you can see on this drop down all the animations you have. And you can cycle through the frames like this. Or you can click playing. I recommend not clicking playing because if it's you always need to disable it before you save because otherwise the animation like infinitely loop in the game. I just need to double check on which frame I want to do stuff. So I'm just going to go for the attack. So you get your character, you get your attack animation. Now we're going to actually make the attack work. So in the state machine, you have all the states and also the attacks will come up here, right? So what I like to do is I click the burst because the burst already has a hitbox and everything. You just right click copy. And then on state machine itself, you right click, paste. Now you have a duplicate of the burst. I'm gonna rename this to attack. Just double click to rename. And this is my hitbox. This is fine for now, right? So now we have all these settings here on the right. Getting into these will be a little bit much, but you will learn these over time. By the way, if you can't see these yellow tags or these hitbox squares, if you don't see any of us, you go project, project settings, plugins, and just enable everything besides a hole punch and character creator. Now we're going to set up all the options on the right here. So this is all the stuff that happens within the state. So if you click the attack button, all of the stuff that shows in here will happen. First, I probably like to reset this completely. And also we probably need a state file. So if you go all the way at the bottom, there's something called burst.gd. That's a script. We can click it. So this has stuff for the burst, but we don't want that. So what I normally do is I just create an empty one that doesn't have anything, just so we can put it in and later replace if you want to code. It's optional, but yeah. So I don't click the Ranger in your folder, call it states or you know, state files or whatever you want. I'm going to right click new script I'm gonna call this empty state don't worry we're not gonna write code really we're just gonna write one line we just you will see it here we're just gonna double click this re remove everything we type in extends character state exactly like this capital C capital S you save it and that's it no more coding all right so Every time you drag in a state file and replace the old one, all the settings will reset. So that's kind of convenient for now. But if you don't want that, you can go click up here and go copy properties. You drag in your file and then you click paste properties. It's a little bit stupid, but that's just the only way Go that does it. So all these settings, there's a lot of stuff here to get into. This is your bread and butter. This is if you learn this stuff, what does it do exactly here on the right? As soon as you get more complex, you need to start coding. But we're gonna do it all without coding right here. Besides that one line we wrote, that it's whatever. Let's see. Do you want to have forces, friction, and gravity? We want all of this. Fallback state. So this is kind of where it goes back. Uh, once the animation is done automatically, weight is basically idle. Sprite animation. Here you write in the exact name of your animation. So if you go to Sprite, you see attack, it should write exactly like this. One cool thing though, is if you don't write it, it takes the name of the state, but you can put it in. All right. Now we need to know the animation length. So animation length is zero to four. It's a little bit misleading. That means it's five frames, right? Because it starts with zero. And it all, if you put the animation length here, so either you put this to uh, five or you leave it as minus one. Minus one makes it automatically have as many frames as it is. So minus one would be five here. So we can leave this. Animation length, this is how long your whole attack should be, right? So I animate it kind of roughly. So I need each frame to stay for two ticks in the game, right? So I go two ticks per frame and we know it's five frames. So we need to know that's 10 in total, right? So you kind of have to do a little bit math in your head. It's a little bit stupid that you have to do it by hand, but that's just how it is. You will get used to it. 
loop animation, we don't need any looping because uh, it's just a one-time use thing. Static force, this is just moving your route, we don't need that. But enter static force, we're gonna make the character move forward a little bit. If you notice in Yomi, you always move forward. Keep in mind, this is very important. Every character on almost every move moves some kind of way up, down, left, right, forward, whatever. So we're just gonna move it in a speed of three. That's just a little bit of a push. And leave this at zero. So this is just the direction, not the speed. Here's the speed. This is the speed. Good. Reset momentum. We don't want that. Otherwise, it gets kind of broken. If you think, if you reset your speed every time, if you reset your speed every time you use a move, it's kind of broken. Particles. This is to spawn extra effects. This is to do some screen sh shake stuff. If you leave it be, um, it does it automatically. Like you don't need to worry about that. Tank particles is another particle. Like just more effects. Then we have the sound effects here. And if you want to have some kind of effect that spawns, even if you don't hit somebody. Projectile, this is a little bit more complex. We can ignore that. Um, flip is, uh, that's fine. We just leave that. Um, meta, auto, this is all just fine. We don't need to worry about that. Here, the menu, this is a little bit more in interesting. We got title. This is how it appears in the game. So we're just gonna call this attack. Show in the menu, yes. If you don't have this on, the attack is kind of hidden. What type it is? It is a normal attack. Uh, UI, this is only if you have stuff where like the jump, where it can have like a selector. Button texture, this is what we did before. That's the icon. So we're just gonna drag that in. Flip icon means if you, yeah, if you're on the other side, the icon gets flipped to the left or you can flip it with facing. That's fine, it's just aesthetics. Air data, this shows you if it's a, if it's a grounded an aerial move or you can move it and use it in both. I'm just gonna use it in both. Air movement needs an air move, like requires air movement to be used. Land cancel means the attack gets interrupted if you land. Now, here's a little bit more complex stuff, the interruption data. This is basically more complex stuff if you wanna know exactly when to interact, when to cancel it, stuff like that. I would just leave this by default. The default are completely fine. You are as actionable as soon as the move is over, and that's all good. Now we have the interruption types. These are basically when can you interrupt it? Can you interrupt it with a burst? Can you interrupt it itself? Self interruptible is on by default. I recommend that put it kind of off, it's kind of broken. Otherwise, you can chain the same move over and over. Now, here, this is very important. This is interrupt from string. That means which move goes from and then we always have something that happened before then we have the attack and then the attack should go into something else are we allowed to use another attack for example you can check all the other characters like wizard and stuff if you need like to know what to put in here but generally i put in grounded that means anytime you ground it you can use it and aerial that means anytime you're an aerial and what can you string it into also grounded and also aerial but also I want to be able to, when I hit somebody, right? Or like if I, if I hit somebody, I want to cancel it earlier. So that's the hit cancel thing. So let's say once we hit somebody, we're allowed to do a grounded attack, a grounded special, aerial attack, aerial special. You can do this with movement and blah, blah, blah. This is just a lot of balancing. This is just kind of the very base setup. And then as interruptions and exceptions, you can ignore that for now. Stances, also we're gonna ignore that. Don't need to worry about this here. Um, the mask stuff, you can kind of ignore that. That's just fine. The standard stuff is all good. And that's about it here. And now this was a little bit much, but we have now a very basic attack set up. Now we need to know where to hit them, when to hit them and how strong. So we're going to go to the sprite up here. We're just going to click this frame up until we see where it should hit. It should hit on this frame, right? So we go down again and now on the hitbox, sadly, we cannot drag drop or something like that. That doesn't really exist, sadly. So we have to use these numbers up here. So we click the hitbox. 
and then we're gonna make it like kinda into shape. It's just a lot of fiddling around. This is also, of course, important for balancing. And maybe just make this a little bit less, something like this. That seems fine to me. If you need multiple hitboxes, you can, of course, just right click and click duplicate and just have two of them. Um, let's say we're gonna make it like this. And then you can control and select both and you can see both hitboxes, right? We don't need the second one right now. We're just gonna remove this. We're just gonna have one. Okay. So, can draw is important. This shows you that we can use it in the game if you have a hitbox showing. How much damage should do? 80, I would say, is a good chunk. And everything lower kind of gets weaker. Everything above kind of gets stronger, right? So we're just gonna do, I don't know, 60. It's nothing crazy. We can ignore this. Minimum damage is how many minimum should do. Hitbox type, just do it normal. No, here, very important. Hit stun ticks. I'm just gonna start with hit lag, to be honest. So hit lag, ticks. This is how many times, not victim hit lag, how many frames should this freeze? This makes an attack really powerful. So the higher this is, like 20 is a really strong attack, around 10 is a strong attack, 5 to 10 is like a normal thing. Um, that's victim hit lag, so that's the enemy. And then hit lag ticks, that is how much your own character should freeze. You should also freeze a little bit, it just makes it more oomph to the attack, right? We're just gonna keep this the same. You can make yourself less if you want to. So now the hit's done, this is the frames when they fly out, how many frames? This is basically how much plus you are in the end. 23 will not be fully plus because the animation still needs to end, right? Like if your animation is still like you in mid animation. So 23 and you have like four takes left or whatever, it's like plus 19, something like that. You can always increase, decrease that. I'm just gonna put this to 25. Damage per ration, that is just to, if it's the first hit in a combo, it basically punishes you and gives you combo less damage it's kind of damage scaling on the first hit it's to make really good moves have worse damage just so to incentivize people to use better moves increment combo that's fine right it adds a combo hits on the ground otg i recommend not putting this on this is a very very strong only very few moves should have this can counter hit should be on hits versus ground arrow makes sense this is like anti-air right you can just disable this, that would be an anti-air only. Um, the eye modifier is how much enemy can move around. Just leave this on one. Uh, smash the eye is how much the little nudging when you get hit. Also just leave it on one. Uh, ignore armor, we're not gonna have this. Alright, mean regain, oh it's just a fault, we're gonna leave all this. Force grounded, uh, we're not gonna have this. It can clash of course, yeah, if the enemy hits you. And it can hit dizzy. That's fine. Hit height, you can go high, mid, low. Just keep, keep it mid. Priority. This is only if you have multiple hitboxes, right? If you have two hitboxes, you can give other high priority. So if it overlaps on both, the higher priority will get chosen. And group means if you have multiple hitboxes that hit after each other. It's for multi-hits only, basically. Screen chain, I would just reset this to whatever it is. All this default stuff is fine. And you can put your custom hit particle in here. If not, you don't need to worry about this. Just leave everything how it is. Um, now it's the sound effects. I'm just gonna click reset here in both, just to have a normal sound. The volume is also fine, based on what, whatever. Not back. This is in which direction you put the people after they hit lagged, right? So while hit's done, basically. So we're just gonna make them one, which goes to the right, and then um, minus 0 0.1, so slightly upwards. And the knockback is how strong knockback should be. Uh, 10 is pretty strong. I would say for a weak hit like this, maybe 5. Launch reversible, this is, doesn't matter right now. We're just gonna remove it. And pushback is how much you get pushback. This is basically to prevent yourself to make infinite combos. 1 is fine, you can reduce that. Be careful, if you put this too low, the character gets really broken. So, then we have ground hit state. This is basically, if you hit them on the ground, 
The only thing you really need to worry about is if you want it to be a launcher to force enemy into the air, you put a third aerial and both. Otherwise, you just leave it like this. We don't want to knock down. If they get knocked down, hit stun, that's fine. No collision, this is whatever here. Ground bounce, that's fine. Wall slam, we're probably not gonna wall slam with this. Now here, very important now. The frame data. I don't know why it's all the way at the bottom, but this is very important. We have to do a little bit of math, right? So we have, this is frame two, which is basically frame three, right? Because it's, it starts with zero. And we know we have two takes per animation, right? And we are on frame, what was it again? On frame three. So three, but times two, because we do two takes, means we are on six, right? So the hitbox should come out of frame six. And active is how long it should be active. You can do one or two frames. And we don't want to have it looped. And that's it. I think we are completely done with the basic attack. We're just going to go in-game and try it out. Single player. Ranger. Cowboy. All right, there we go. We only have the idle animation, right? We don't have anything else, so we can just use the attack. All right, counts on a little bit. It's a little bit weak still. We should probably go a little bit harder with this animation, like make it more big. But as you can see, it does work. And that's your very basic attack done.